Welcome back to the channel. I'm Tim, that's Daisy, and we are hauling paws. We transport recreational vehicles, RVs, campers, if you will, all over this beautiful country of ours. And they pay us for it. It's amazing. Today I'm coming at you from West Virginia, Morgantown, West Virginia picking up a reload and heading back to Ohio and then on back to Goshen to pick up something and I don't know where we're going to go after that but we're going to kind of team drive not really team drive convoy drive somewhere we're going to pick a place I uh, got a new driver that's switching from one company to my company Wave Express and I think we're going to go to Idaho or Montana or someplace and I'm going to teach them how all the paperwork and stuff goes. But in today's episode, we're talking about the five things that you have to master or at least properly manage to be successful in this industry. Some of them are kind of easy, some of them take a few more steps, and then some of them take some practice until you get really good at it. And until you get really good at it, you're not going to make a ton of money. I'm going to show you how to make more money. Stay tuned. Number five is managing where you sleep and how you sleep. So managing where you sleep is looking at the map, trying to figure out how far can you go and still find a place so you can park, whether you're unloaded or you're loaded, and get a good night's sleep in a safe spot. Truck stops are pretty well lit. If you're unloaded, you park in the front like I am now. If you're loaded, then you look for an RV spot or you might have to park by where the semis are. I never park where the semis are. I'll find a different place to park along one of the edges or something like that. But you need to find a place. You wanna be able to put in your whole drive day and then get a spot as close to the end of your drive day as you can. You don't wanna be stopping two hours short and you really don't want to go over an hour. So you have to be careful about what those stops are. So you use Google Maps or use those three, the three main apps, the Flying J, the TA, and the Loves, and you can find the truck stops. You might be able to find rest areas and things like that too. It's just gonna depend on your comfort level and where you want to uh, stay at. I like to stay at a truck stop so I can get up, get some coffee in the morning, and get right on the road. Sometimes I have to revert things like rest areas. That's less common. Uh, more common is a Walmart. You can find a Walmart in just about any town. And 99% of them, it's okay to park in their park parking lot. All Walmarts will let you park there. Same thing with Home Depot, Cracker Barrel, things like that. They'll let you park there, but the city well, might have an ordinance that says no overnight parking. So you gotta watch those. Sometimes you'll pull in and it'll say no overnight parking. And then other times you can pull in and it'll say no semi parking. So you can still sneak into the side park and you're fine. I did that in uh, Stevenson Ranch, California. It said no semi parking, didn't say no RV parking. So I parked and it's right next door to the dealership. So that was great. So you wanna manage where you sleep. You also wanna manage how you sleep. Speaking of, it's getting a little warm in here. So I'm gonna turn on the air conditioning. So you have to manage how you sleep. So you want to set up your back sleeper area, your bed area. I know it's not a legal sleeper, but you wanna set your, your bed area up in the back so that you can be the most comfortable. I've done that for me. I've got my big gym bag that has all my clothes over here in the corner and it doesn't get in my way. 
I stand it up instead of laying it down, but I stand it up and I'm either laying on my back long ways or I'm on my side. So then my legs are bent and they just kind of go around the bag. So it's not a big deal. Um, I am 6'4", so I can't lay straight across. I have to lay diagonal. So my head is in the far back corner and my feet are up here on the door, typically on the door uh, armrest kind of thing. I have my memory buttons on the door. One of them is programmed to make this seat go all the way forward, the back come all the way up, and then it also lifts all the way up. So it gives me maximum room in the back. Uh, there's a little more room in this truck than in the old Daisy. So it, it's pretty comfortable to sleep in. And as you can see, the back windows and the far back, I leave in all the time. The only ones that I put in to go to sleep are the two front side windows and then the, the front front window. So you wanna make sure that you're sleeping good. You need to get good sleep out on the road. Temperature is another thing. You gotta think about staying warm or staying cool or whatever. So think about how you're gonna heat and think about how you're gonna cool. As far as heating goes, for me, I've got a generator. I run a little cord through the door. I've got an electric blanket that I sleep under. And then I have a small 400 watt ceramic heater that I hang from up, up here and, uh, and it heats this place up fine. I'm super comfortable in just about any temperature. Uh, once it gets hot, I'm gonna have to figure something else out. Uh, right now, this truck's not deleted, so I don't really wanna be idling it all night, all the time, if I can avoid it. Plus, being not deleted and all that, and not tuned, uh, it uses a lot of fuel to idle overnight. And we all know fuel is an issue, right? especially right now. This is March of 2022, so fuel is really high. Cooling it is gonna be a challenge. I don't know if I'm gonna get a little portable type air conditioning and pump it through the back sliding window or what I'm gonna do, but I'll figure something out to stay cool. Number four is fuel economy. You need to manage your vehicle's fuel economy properly, both loaded and unloaded. So you need to figure out where that perfect speed is, that perfect RPM. It's different on all trucks. It depends on the size of the tires, the gear ratio, what motor you have, what transmission you have. Do you have a single wheel or a dual wheel? Do you have a long box or a short box? It's different for all of them. So you have to figure that out for yourself. There's gonna be a certain speed that you get the best fuel economy unloaded, and then there's gonna be a certain speed that you get the best fuel economy loaded at. And you need to stick to it. Stick to the speed. And if you stick to the speed, then you'll get the most fuel economy and you'll be more efficient while you're driving down the road. To figure out what that magical number is, is just gonna take a few tanks of fuel. You're gonna to have to drive at 65 unloaded, and then you have to drive at 68 unloaded and see if you're better or worse. And then once you get to 68, push it to 70. Maybe it's 71, maybe it's 69. But you're gonna to have to play with those numbers until you figure out where your sweet spot is. When you're loaded, most companies limit your speed to 65. That's an average for your entire driving cycle though. So there might be some times where you'll be going a little bit faster and might be a lot of times where you'll be going a little bit slower, but in general, we're gonna use 65. Some people find that 64 is the perfect fuel economy thing. That's what I found in my truck was 64. If I went 65, I would lose almost a full mile per gallon going down the road, one mile an hour. So 64 was the sweet spot. 63 didn't help, and 64 ended up being the perfect spot. If I went 70, my fuel mileage tanked loaded. I mean, absolutely tanked. I would drop four, five, sometimes six, depending on the terrain, miles per gallon by going five miles, miles an hour faster than 65. So you gotta find out what your number is. Number three. number three is weather. Weather plays a big part of this industry, this job, this career, this business, whatever you wanna call it, weather is a big deal. You have to become a meteorologist 
you have to forecast weather three days out, four days out, five states away to figure out, is it going to be safe to go through there? Are they going to close the roads and I'm going to get stuck? So you have to be constantly watching the weather across the entire nation or at least in the region that you're going to be traveling to. For me, I go anywhere, so I'm watching the weather all over the place. And more than what, when the weather's good in one area, then I'll go there. And if it's that, if it's good in the southeast, then I'll go southeast. If it's sh- crappy <laughs> in the southeast, but the southwest is looking good, then I'll go southwest. And if the weather's looking good in the north, I love going to Idaho. So if the weather's good going north over to Idaho, I'll run in, I'll run to Idaho. Uh, they pay good money to go there, and it's a beautiful drive. So weather is another thing that you got to manage. Now. I can't tell you how to do that. You're going to have to get the apps, the Windy app, Wind Compass. Well, Wind Compass, not so much. Wind Compass is like a right now app. What is my wind, where I'm at right this second? So you can kind of gauge what's going on outside of you. Uh, The Windy app will give you future wind views and things like that. And then the weather app, whatever kind of weather app you use. I just use the Weather Channel weather app. And I look at that and then while I'm driving to go back to a load or when I'm trying to decide what load I'm going to uh, pick, uh, I listen to, it's on Pluto, there's an app called Pluto, it's free TV. So you put it on your phone and it's got a whole bunch of channels that are just free. It's got like the military channel and, and just all kinds of news and all kinds of stuff. But they've got a station in there called the Weather Nation. And what I do is I start playing it on my phone and it and it plays through the speakers in the in the truck and then I just listen to them like a podcast and while they're talking about the weather in this part of the country or the weather in that part of the country or it's going to be really bad here or really bad there. So uh, the Weather Nation is is kind of my go-to to kind of they'll just keep updating what's going on across the entire country. Then I can go to uh, the Weather Channel and look at the radars and future views on that and try to figure out where I wanna go. But weather is a big, big deal. So you gotta manage the weather because if you get stopped in Wyoming for two days, you're not making any money. If you get stopped down south because some big storm came in or a hurricane, you should've known about a hurricane. But still, like right now, they're getting pounded down in the Carolinas and I didn't go there. So I don't have to deal with that, but a buddy of mine's coming out of the Carolinas and he said it was bad. So you don't wanna be there. Uh, Down in Louisiana, they just had tornadoes. In Texas, there were tons of tornadoes just just yesterday and the day before. So you wanna be avoiding those bad weather areas because it can cause you some problem. Not just being shut down, but you could get yourself into a really dangerous situation. So watch the weather. Number two takes some practice. It takes some trial and error, and you're not gonna get it right, right out of the gate. Number two is managing your clock. You have to manage the clock so that you're on duty when you're supposed to be, you're on drive cycle when you're supposed to be, and you're off duty when you're supposed to be. And the off duty is actually the more important one. If you go back and watch one of my other videos, I kind of explain how I screwed myself out of lots and lots of hours each week because I wasn't using my on-duty, off-duty correctly. I've since learned, I've gotten a lot better, and I'm very much more efficient at managing the clock so I get as many of those 70 hours in my cycle as I can. I can't tell you how to do it because you do things different than me. So you're gonna have to You're gonna have to look at your clock and you're going to have to manage it appropriately. The biggest thing is just changing your your status every time that you change status, especially off duty. If you pull in to a pilot and you're going to go to the bathroom, then go off duty immediately, as soon as you get there. If you walk in and forget, then edit your log to put it back to the correct time to make sure that Uh, that you have all the time that you're allotted. And yes, it's legal to edit your logs. If you screw it up, you can go back in and fix it on that day. Once you sign it and send it to the company, then it's kind of written in stone. 
but on the day that it's happening, you can edit that all day. I've gotten in the truck and forgotten to go to drive cycle, and I just drove. Three hours later, I look to see how close I am to my brake, and I realize, crap, I'm still on duty pre-trip inspection. So I just went in and changed it to driving and slid the sliders over, and then you're good. So you can go in and edit it. But it's very, very important to manage your clock the best that you possibly can. Finally, number one. And the number one thing that will make you the most money, save you the most money, either way you want to look at it, it's money that's going to be in your pocket, is you have to manage your fuel stops. You have to be Johnny on the spot or Jenny on the spot at the fuel app, whether you use the Com Data or the EFS or whatever you use, you need to be watching, you need to be planning your stops. You can't just drive until you're almost empty and then decide I gotta get fuel and stop at whatever place. And oh yeah, I'm getting a dollar two discount at this place, but it doesn't matter if the price started at seven dollars. When you could have stopped a hundred miles ago and and got fuel for three dollars. You have to manage that and look at the prices, do your route, the, all those uh, apps have routing features, do the route, find where the fuel stops are, and stop where it's cheap. If you got a half a tank and, you're, and you, you're passing one that's cheap, then you're wasting money. Stop, get it, just run in, get the fuel, get the hell out of there. But stop and get fuel, fill it up, because Another half a tank down the road, it might be twice the price. So you really, really have to manage those stops good. You might not be in an area where the EFS is really covering real good. Use all the tools that are at your disposal. There's mud flap, there's get upside, gas buddy. And if you're a member of Costco, get the Costco app. It'll tell you what the diesel prices are at the Costco stations. So you can maybe pull into a Costco station. I have. I've actually used the Costco fuel more than I've used the um, Mudflap app. Mudflap doesn't seem to work too, too well for me. I mean, it works. I just don't find any discounts that are better than the EFS. With my company, with Wave Express, about 90% of the time I'm stopping at a Flying J, which is fine because for 50 gallons, Flying J gives you a free shower also and you build points up a lot faster. So I'm getting cheap fuel, getting free showers, I'm building up points. They got the coffee club, so you know me and my coffee. Every, you buy nine, get the 10th one free. And so you just punch your number in each time that you buy coffee and, and away you go. And half the time you go in there and you get a coffee, if you got a refillable mug, you go up to the counter, just coffee, and they can just say, have a good day. So that's saving money too. But you really, really have to manage those fuel stops. Again, I can't tell you how to do it because you go to different places than I go. But when I leave, I pick up my camper and I do the route and I look and I say, okay, I got a good fuel stop here and a field good fuel stop here and a good fuel stop there. So then what I want to do is I want to maximize my miles so that I can get to those good fuel stops. Now let's say you're going out west and you're getting close to uh, Grand Island was the last really cheap one that I went by when I was out there a couple of weeks ago. I couldn't make it to Grand Island because I didn't have enough fuel to make it all the way to Grand Island. So I stopped short at the cheapest place I could find and I put, I think I put 20 gallons in and then that got me to Grand Island and then I filled up for three dollars and I think it was 360 something in Grand Island. So you have to be aware of how far can you go. That's gonna go back to your fuel economy thing and figuring out what your range is. Do you have an extended fuel tank? Do you, how big is your onboard tank? If you don't have an extended fuel tank, I can't stress enough that in this industry, you need one. Really, really need one. If you happen across a place that's got fuel for $2.50, put 
put 130 gallons in or 140 gallons or 150 or whatever you can hold, put it all in. Plan your stop to be as empty as you can by the time you get there. And most of these are just planning. You're looking at an app and you're planning your routes and where you're going to go. But it's not just as easy as just, oh, well, I just want to plan my trip. Because we're trying to make money. That's the whole goal of this whole process is to make money. We get to see the country also, this beautiful country of ours. But we also want to go home with fat stacks of cash in our pocket, right? Right. So maximize those five things and you'll make more money. So thanks for watching the video. If you got something good out of it, then click the like button. If you got other ideas that will really help, then put them down in the comments. If you haven't subscribed, please click the subscribe button. I've got new videos coming out more regularly now. I kind of took a break because I was switching over trucks, but now some new videos are going to be coming out. So click all those buttons down there. And as always, have safe travels, and I hope to see you on the road.